Hello everyone. Welcome to MBBS classes. Myself, Dr. Hanifa. Today, I'll be talking on stapedial reflex. Stapedial reflex is also sometimes called as acoustic reflex. Acoustic reflex or the stapedius reflex, it is a part of the middle ear test battery, which is usually tested while doing tympanometry. This acoustic reflex, it refers to the reflexive contraction of the stapedius muscle resulting from the sound stimulus. The parameters which are most commonly studied during the stapedial reflex uh, measurement are the acoustic reflex threshold and the acoustic reflex decay. So, these acoustic reflex tests they measure the changes in the tympanic membrane compliance which is caused by the contraction of the stapedius muscle. The acoustic reflex is moderated by the acoustic reflex arc. So, as it tests the function of the stapedius muscle, let us see how the stapedius muscle functions. So, to refresh the anatomy, the stapedius muscle it arises from the pyramid. It is attached to the neck of the stapes. This is the stapes. The stapedius muscle is arising here. It is attached to the neck of the stapes. So, when this stapedius muscle is stimulated, it leads to the contraction of the stapedius muscle. So, when the stapedius muscle contracts, it increases the stiffness of the middle ear conductive system. First, there is a stiffness, first the stapes, uh, stapes bone gets fixed, then it pulls the uh, malleus and it stiffens the whole tympano ossicular chain system, thereby reducing the undue passage of loud noise to the inner ear and thereby it protects the inner ear. So, the acoustic reflex arc is located at the level of lower brainstem. This arc, it has two components. First is the afferent component, which carries the signals from the periphery to the central nervous system and the efferent from the central nervous system to the periphery. So, let's see what comprises the afferent arc of the acoustic reflex. The afferent is formed by the acoustic nerve which carries the signal from the cochlea to the cochlear nucleus. If we see here, if we trace the afferent arc, the sound when it reaches the cochlea, it is transmitted by the eighth nerve that is the vestibular cochlear nerve to the cochlear nucleus. From this cochlear nucleus, the neural signals, they go to the medial superior olivary nucleus. From the medial superior olivary nucleus, the, uh, there is the interneurons, they give uh, signals to both the sides, to the ipsilateral side also and to the opposite side also, to the motor nucleus of the facial nerve on both sides. And the efferent arc is formed by the R from by the neural transmission from the level of facial motor nucleus to the stapedius muscle. So, again, the if efferent arc, if we trace, let's see, this is the cochlea. From here, the transmission is going via the eighth nerve to the cochlear nucleus. From the cochlear nucleus, it is going to the superior olivary nucleus. From from the level of superior olivary nucleus, the transmissions, they are going to the both the sides, to the same side here, to the facial motor nucleus and also to the opposite facial motor nucleus, which explains the contralateral acoustic reflex. From the motor facial nucleus on both the sides, the sig it supplies the stapedius muscle and on exposure to the loud noise, the stapedius muscle, it contracts because of the acoustic reflex arc. 
The first measurement of the stepedal reflex which is commonly done is the measurement of acoustic reflex threshold or we call it ART. So this acoustic reflex threshold, it is the softest level of sound that elicits the stepedial reflex contraction. Whenever the sound is introduced into the one ear, the stepedius muscle of both the ears, they contract. So normally this, this uh, threshold, it occurs bilaterally after either the ipsilateral or the contralateral stimulation when a pure tone or noise is presented to the normal hearing ears. So the probe tone which is commonly used for the measurement of the acoustic reflex threshold during the tympanometry generally it is 220 or 226 hertz. For a normal hearing ear we get the acoustic reflex threshold at 85 to 100 decibel SPL and in pure tones. The second measure which is used for testing the acoustic reflex is the measurement of acoustic reflex decay. This acoustic reflex decay, it measures the ability of the stipedius muscle to maintain the state of sustained contraction, which means that when we measure the acoustic reflex decay, we see for how much duration the stipedius muscle was in contraction. For this testing, usually a signal 10 decibel above the acoustic reflex threshold is presented for 10 seconds. For the frequency test, for the testing, we use the frequencies 500 hertz and 1000 hertz. So, when the sound level is presented to the ear 10 decibel for 10 sec seconds, if we call the response as abnormal if the amplitude of the response decreases to one half or less of its original amplitude within the five seconds. So if there is a decay occurring within the five seconds, then the, we call it abnormal response. So what is the clinical significance of this acoustic reflex decay? If we get an abnormal reflex decay, it indicates retrocochlear disease. Now let us look into the certain terminologies which is used in the acoustic reflex testing. Normal means the result is within the normal limits. Abnormal result suggests either absent response or elevated response. When we use the term ipsilateral, it means that the stimulus and the reading is done in the same ear. That means the tone is also given in the same ear and the recording is also done in the same ear. When we use the term contralateral, it means that the stimulus is presented to the ear opposite to the reading ear. So when the results, when we interpret the results, the normal acoustic reflex threshold if we get, then what does it mean? So when we get a normal acoustic threshold, uh, threshold within 70 to 100 decibel, it gives us certain ideas. That means the large conductive loss is not present in that ear. It means that if a reflex is present, that uh, even though a conductive loss is also present, the loss is not that severe which is obstructing the passage of the sound or the conduction of the sounds. Normal acoustic reflex threshold sometimes may also be present in a sensory neural hearing loss. But even if there is a sensory neural hearing loss, the degree of hearing loss is not worse than the moderate loss. And moreover, if the acoustic reflex is present, it gives us an idea that the reflex pathway is intact. But what, what happens if we get an absent reflex? 
it means that either the uh, conductive loss is too large and moreover if the sensory neural hearing loss is present the reason of absent reflex is that the degree of loss is severe to profound moreover if in b type tympanogram whenever we are we are, whenever we are doing the uh, acoustic reflex testing it cannot be recorded now let us see the findings of the acoustic reflex in different diseases so in middle ear disease with conductive hearing loss in the test ear in this condition the reflexes will be absent as the middle ear system is the conductive system of the ear if there is an any disorder of the middle ear then it prevents the tympanic membrane from showing change in compliance on contraction of the stapedius muscle that means it gives resistance in cochlear pathology the reflex it occurs when the impaired ear is stimulated at 60 decibel so if we are getting a reflex at even 60 decibels that means that is indicative of recruitment which we get in cochlear pathology in retrocochlear pathologies the acoustic reflex will be absent in most patients and moreover a significant finding is we get is that the decay is abnormal there is abnormal decay of the acoustic reflex we can also assess the brain stem lesions by doing the acoustic reflex since the acoustic reflex are it starts from cochlea till the brain stem so in cases of brain stem lesion the ipsilateral reflex will be intact and the contralateral reflex will be absent that is at the region of superior olivary nucleus so if, if there is any lesion in the crossed brain stem pathways acoustic reflex helps us to find out the site of lesion it helps us in the clinical diagnosis now let us see the clinical uses of the stapedial reflex as we have seen the acoustic arc it um, it begins from the cochlea till the brain stem so by doing the acoustic reflex we get the information on the status of auditory system from the middle ear to the brain stem moreover by assessing the acoustic reflex threshold it helps us in the estimation of the degree of cochlear hearing loss in children in difficult to test patients and also in certain um, settings of non organic hearing loss or malingers assessment of the stapedial reflex is also a valuable tool in the topo diagnostic test for the facial nerve palsy cases it gives us information about the level of the facial nerve lesions if there is a lesion in the proximal uh, site that means in the area proximal to the origin of nerve to stapedius in these cases the stapedial reflex will be absent and in lesions of the facial nerve distal to the nerve to stapedius the stapedial reflex will be intact assessment of the stapedial reflex is also helps us to differentiate the site of auditory lesions whether there is a pathology in the middle ear cochlea retrocochlear and brain stem lesions with this i come to the end of this video thank you for watching the video